Scrafty has been brought back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and dude's got some big pants and some big potential. Scrafty is a dark fighting type that has a mediocre base 90 attack and 58 speed. However, its solid base 115 defenses allow it to get going with Dragon Dance. It can then take advantage of stab knockoffs and drain punch for longevity, and its ability Moxie gives it another attack boost after each kill. Terra is also a huge buff to this thing, allowing Scrafty to change its type to lose its 4x fairy weakness, and if you're underprepared, Scrafty can be a huge threat. Alright, so look, Scrafty takes the idea of never using a belt pretty seriously. They also told me they take pretty seriously the fact that you should hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, and then nobody gets hurt. Today, I have a super interesting match for you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Blissey. It's never a bad time for breakfast, and it looks like we're getting some scrambled eggs out here. And I decide to lead off with the Excadrill. I want to prioritize getting Stealth Rock up here. My opponent, they do have a very scary team, and if I can start to chip away with the rocks, I kind of want to, want to get these up for sure. So... Blissey doesn't really have a whole lot of business being here, but if it's a lead, it's probably Stealth Rock. I'm not really afraid of this thing. And we are going to, in fact, just end up trading the Stealth Rock, which I'm really not worried about because, you know, Excadrill does have uh, the access to Rapid Spin. And overall, Blissey's ass is late for her shift at the Pokemon Center, so I imagine this thing is probably going to get out of here. However, I just decided to go for that Iron Head. Now, I know that the only thing that really wants to switch in here is going to be this damn thing. The Keldeo, my little pony looking ass, comes in, and the Iron Head, after Stealth Rock Chip, not going to do a whole lot. I probably should have clicked the Rapid Spin. But again, I didn't know if dude was working with some crazy Blissey bullshit. So, this is honestly fine. I figure I actually don't have a lot that wants to switch into Keldeo. But I do, in fact, have a Vile Plume, and depending on kind of what this thing's working with, I can come in here, I can pressure it with the threat of like a Sleep Powder, and overall, just kind of get some, some intel about what old Pony's working with here. So, I bring in the Vile Plume, and this thing is just going to go right for a flip turn. They make a nice little pivot predicting a switch, and now they get a matchup against my Vile Plume, which is not really ideal. And this is going to end up bringing out one of the scariest threats against my team, and that is the Hisuian Arcanine. Statue Boy comes in looking like a good boy. However, I have basically nothing that wants to switch into this, and we have a little bit of a situation here where... A lot of the time you see this, it's going to be choiced in some way, whether it's Scarf or if it's Banned. I decide I'm going to stay in here and try to go for a Sleep Powder. If it's Choice Scarf and goes for a Head Smash, I actually live. So, I stay in because I don't really have a better choice, and a Head Smash is going to take care of the Vile Plume. I'm almost max defense on this thing, but most importantly, the Effect Spore actually comes in and gives this thing a Paralyze right before we go down. So, that's actually super clutch. I bet you wish you did not touch the flower now, buddy. We smell like shit and we paralyze you. That's what Vile Plume does. But the other good news is, seeing that that Head Smash kills, it actually, it puts me in a spot where now I know this thing is going to be Choice Banned. It's stuck in the Head Smash and now Excadrill comes in pretty safely. So now, I can go for a Rapid Spin, get rid of their Stealth Rock, and Arcanine does have to get out of here. So, that thing being paralyzed is great because I know, you know, Excadrill easily outspeeds since it's not Scarf. Um, they predict the Earthquake here and they're going to end up bringing in Tornadus with his nice little purple bra. I go for that Rapid Spin. It ships this thing down below half, which is amazing, but also gets me a nice little speed boost to the point where now I'm actually faster, and then I can go directly for the head smash, and that's going to take care of the Tornadus. So we're actually feeling pretty good at this point. Excadrill is zooming. We take care of a big threat, and after that speed boost from the rapid spin, I'm actually in a spot where I'm faster than pretty much everything. So on the revenge switch, they decide to go into Keldeo, and I'm feeling like, okay, this is fine. I have enough damage to where an earthquake should kill here. I'm faster. And Uno Reverse on my ass, it is going to actually go first with the Sacred Sword, and that reveals this is going to be a Choice Scarf Pony, so that does in fact kill my mole, and at least I'm figuring out kind of what they're working with here, but paying the price, you know, for losing some mods. So, while Excadrill goes down, this does open up an opportunity for a nice little revenge switch, and I decide to go into Primarina. Scuba Steve is out here, looking manly, and while I do win this matchup, it likely draws in a special wall, and they have a Cresselia sitting right there. So what I'm going to do is actually end up making a switch here, predicting them to switch into Cresselia or the Latios, but Latios probably doesn't come in here. However, they do end up switching into Cresselia, and the Moonduck is in for a rude awakening, because we are met immediately with the, you know, a hoodlum with his pants sagging, and this actually puts me in a fantastic spot in terms of momentum. Now... Cresselia does have an interesting kind of matchup here where, you know, they have the four times super effective coverage with Fairy. However, I threaten this thing with a knockoff and it's going to do a bunch of damage. So, I'm actually going to end up committing the Poison Terra here, expecting them to go for like a Fairy move, and then I can essentially get up a nice and free Dragon Dance. But, they're actually going to switch the Cresselia out and they decide to go directly into Keldeo. Now, the reason for that is because if I click knockoff, it gives this thing a justified boost 
which isn't really a huge deal because this thing seems to be special anyway. However, they do live a knockoff, and then they just outspeed and pony blast my ass. But instead, I go ahead and put the skull on my head, looking about as gangster as Pokemon has ever looked. <laughs> I can't even believe the size of the Terra hat on my dude. It looks re-damn-diculous, but I now get a free Dragon Dance up, and I'm in a spot where since my base speed isn't super high, a Keldeo with a Choice Scarf is still gonna outspeed me, but the good news is we got hella defense and we are ready for this. So they are gonna outspeed. They hit me with the Hydro Pump, and that's the best damage they have. Knocks me just below half, and I'm just like, hey, go ahead and uh, give me that back. I drain him with the Fist, down goes the Keldeo, and we get ourselves back to a respectable amount of health. Luckily, this thing doesn't have any coverage on poison, so at least super effectively. And Scrafty is out here looking nice, because we also now activate Moxie, which gives us another attack boost. And now we're in a spot where I'm faster than everything they have except for this dog. That is because since they went into this now, it means that this thing is running extreme speed. Now with the Choice Band, that's actually only able to do less than 50% to me. So I know that I can take one regardless. They do go for it, but we get the full para. Shout out to Vileplume. And now we can just punch this thing right in the face and that is gonna end up taking care of the Arcanine, which now we're snowballing because I'm now at full HP and my attack stat is going crazy and just actually even gets worse because of the Moxie. So down goes the Arcanine. Now the important thing is the remaining three Pokemon that they have left do not enjoy Scrafty and cannot <laughs> really do anything. So. They now decide to go into Latios, who does have a type matchup here. However, I am in fact faster, and a knockoff just absolutely obliterates my dude. However, they're actually just gonna run, which I don't blame them because there is essentially no hope at this point. And while you may think their three remaining Pokemon get away with, uh, without the sweet release of death, you would be incorrect because we do have technology. So like I said, Latios gets in fact turned to dust from a knockoff, and that's gonna take care of that thing easily. Now our next victim is gonna be our Blissey we saw from earlier, and finally it's time to eat them eggs. I can go for a drain punch, absolutely destroy this thing and get the protein out of it. And last but not least, Cresselia's annoying ass gets to come in and get knocked immediately out, like I'm Mike Tyson out here, and that's gonna do it. However, just because this team is super fun, I do have a second match here for you. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. This next game, we have an interesting team that seems like it has a little bit of a kind of a rain mode and overall some pretty scary threats. Let's jump into it. So this time, Willy Wonka over here is gonna lead off with the Rabombi. As I decide to toss out the Excadrill, it's a fantastic lead in a lot of positions, especially here because I know this thing is basically, it's here just to set up that sticky web, and I can just spin that shit out of here. So I'm just gonna go right for the stealth rock as they do lay down the, uh, the nice little layer of the sticky webs, which Excadrill says that is totally fine. I'm just gonna be over here just laying down some stealth rock, just having a nice little little mole time in the sunshine out here. And Rabombi has basically no business staying in against the Excadrill here. So I'm actually just gonna go directly for that rapid spin. Wanna get rid of these sticky webs as early as possible, really not great for my team, as they opt to go for the U-turn, and they do also take a little bit of a Rocky Helmet chip, which is nice. I am out here pointy as hell, and they now are gonna switch into the Corviknight. Probably worried about something like an Earthquake, just it does, anything does damage to Rubombi. However, I just go spinning super fast, and I do get rid of them. However, in comes the Corviknight. I do touch it, so I take Rocky Helmet damage from this thing, and I'm a little bit concerned. Now, Excadrill does not have much to touch this thing, and my best offensive option is gonna be the Magmortar. So I'm thinking, looking a few turns ahead here, I do have a couple options. I wanna get in Magmortar, as it's a great answer to the Corviknight, and this thing cannot really one-hit KO me, but I know they have a couple different uh, defensive switch-ins to the Magmortar anyway. So it turns out I come in on an Iron Defense, which is great because that shows me kind of the set that this thing is working with, and it does not want to take a Flamethrower to the face. Now, this Magmortar is rocking with the Solar Beam along with Terra Grass. Now I imagine they probably go into something like the Politoed here, but I'm gonna play it safe and just go straight for that Flamethrower in the case they just didn't wanna like, wanted to tear the, the Corviknight or something, didn't wanna get rid of that defense boost. I just go for the Flamethrower as in comes the Politoed. So Flamethrower in the rain is, you know, not gonna hurt very much as the, the rain, you know, weakens the fire damage. I do, however, get a burn, which is nice. It, probably a confused ass frog coming in and getting burnt immediately in the rain, but I'm gonna make things even more confusing here because I'm gonna go for the Terra Grass plus go for that Solar Beam. Now, ordinarily a two turn move, I am rocking the Power Herb to be able to get it off immediately. Now, the Terra Grass works in my favor in both ways in that now I have a defensive uh, typing to be able to handle whatever this thing wants to throw at me, whether it's Scald or whatever. Uh, so I put the flower on my head looking beautiful and I can go for that Solar Beam. However, the bad news about using Solar Beam in the rain is that 
Rain actually halves the damage from Solar Beam, but this is still my best option here. I'm gonna go for that Power Herb Solar Beam. With that Terra Grass Stab, it is still gonna do a ton of damage, nearly takes care of the Politoed. Uh, it does actually put it in range to where uh, the burn is gonna take care of it, but they actually just go for that Chilling Water, which I do resist because I have the pretty flower on my head. We're looking extra beautiful with our Sausage Lips today. However, this thing does actually just end up living the burn damage, but it's no big deal. I can then just outspeed and knock this thing out with the flamethrower in the rain. Obviously it's at like literally one HP. And now this is a dead frog, which is nice because now they don't have a way to set up reliable rain for uh, the Basque Legion in the back, which is pretty damn scary. So on the free switch, they decide to bring in the Clod Sire. Now this thing is relatively annoying. I do have coverage on it in terms of psychic. However, I don't really want to take like a poison jab to the face as seeing as I'm grass type now. And Magmortar does look pretty nice for the late game, especially for things like that Corviknight. So, I'm actually just going to end up switching into the Vile Plume here, and they end up going for the Yawn instead, which is a little bit interesting of a matchup here. Now it kind of puts me on a timer. I don't have a whole lot that I can do to this thing other than put it asleep, and I don't really want Vile Plume to be put to sleep. So my ass is just going to switch directly back into Mag Mortar. I figured, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go right back into Mag Mortar here, as I don't really know what they want to click on the Vile Plume, but as long as I can get decent chip on this Clod Sire, uh, the late game for a potential Scrafty Sweep is looking pretty sweet. So they end up going for the Toxic Spikes here, and now I just want to get some reliable chip here with the Psychic. So we do have the coverage. Uh, it's actually also going to do a nice little chunk to the Clod Sire here. Brings it below half. Sadly though, I do have to take a Poison Jab with his crazy spikes on the back of his back, and down goes the Mag Mortar. So this now allows me a switch, and with that amount of damage that I had, I'm actually in a pretty decent spot here as Clod Sire. Uh, is one of like the, the the big kind of defensive Pokemon I got to get through, other than the Corviknight. But I can go back into the Vile Plume, and what I want to do here is put this thing to sleep before it has a chance to yawn me. So I do go for that Sleep Powder, and it's gonna put him into a nice little Naparu. So with this thing asleep, I have a couple different options. Obviously, Vile Plume doesn't have the greatest matchup here. Being able to like Giga Drain it isn't isn't gonna really cut it, but. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to try to get the Scrafty going. So with this thing asleep, I can bring in Pants, and uh, even without a belt, we are still swagging out out here, and I do want to try to get uh, some Dragon Dances up going here with this Scrafty. So I figure Sleeping Clod Sire kind of is my best option to, to bring this thing in. It does, in fact, however, wake up on first turn and goes for a Yawn. So I'm like, damn it, that could not have been worse for me. However... Knowing that I actually have the Lumberry, I'm going to wake up as soon as I fall asleep. So I can use this opportunity to set up a Dragon Dance. I'm dancing right before we go to sleep. And uh, I don't know how, I guess we're kind of a little lizard guy, half dragon. I don't know. I'm just a little dude in some crazy pants with dancing with like I got ants in my pants. And they do go for that poison jab. I then fall asleep because of the yawn. But then this Lumberry is like, no, no, no. You're actually... I, mean, I like to think that this Lumberry works as a, as a nice little caffeine shot. Wakes me up immediately. And now, with the plus one attack and speed, obviously this thing is going to go down. However, it ends up being Quick Claw Clod Sire, which is the craziest thing ever. They poison jab me before they go down, uh, and knockoff takes care of it. Luckily, I did not get poisoned there, um, and I tell his Quick Claw to get the fuck out of here. That was definitely unexpected, so it could have been worse, because now I get a Moxie boost. I'm actually sitting at plus two attack plus one speed, and I'm faster than everything other than the fact that this Rabombi, if it is running timid max speed, it does still outspeed me. However, Scrafty is going to go first, showing that this thing is running modest nature, and with my Dragon Dance, we're just fast enough to be able to take care of that thing. Down goes the Rabombi, kind of my biggest threat at this point, and we are just starting to pile it on with the Moxies. We are looking quite scary. We're seeing, sitting at plus three attack at this point. And now the only thing that can really stop me is going to be this Corviknight. However, I've had so much Moxie at this point that a nice little stab drain punch is actually going to take care of a defensive Corviknight. And not only are we in an insane spot, drain punch just puts us like pretty much back to full. We did take some, you know, Rocky Helmet chip, but we've successfully got the Scrafty going to the point of essentially no return. We get another Moxie boost just because we're just evil at this point. And they do have two Pokemon left. One of them is going to be the Sinistra. This thing is floating extremely high, and this is an annoying defensive Pokemon, but with the amount of attack we have, we also have the Stab knockoff, and that is going to be some dead Jello. So <laughs> down goes the Matcha Tea, and their final Pokemon is going to be the Basque Legion. It also does not have the benefit of the rain, and also now it has to stare me in the face with like plus 100 attack, and Scrafty is struggling to keep my pants up, but not struggling to, to grab this W as... 
you know, in comes the Basque Legion. They have not committed the Terra yet at this point. However, I have just so much attack that it probably really does not matter. I just go for the stab knockoff. It's super effective. They are actually going to end up committing the Terra here. Um, however, Willy Wonka is just going to go for, for the uh, the Bug Terra here. And that is not going to save you because Scrafty is an absolute beast who be stepping on bugs on the daily out here as long as we're not tripping over our pants. So knockoff is going to finish off the game. That is going to be the end of it. And I thought that was pretty fun. Scrafty can truly get out of hand quickly. Any Moxie sweepers are extremely scary. And plus, with this thing's defensive capabilities, it's it's a damn menace. So that's going to do it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. And I will catch you next time. Also, shout out to this dude's username.